Hello and welcome back to the Crack and Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code number five, longest palindromic substring. Given a string S, return the longest palindromic substring in S. Let's look at some basic examples. If we have the string B A B A D, um, then what is the longest uh, palindromic substring? So we can see that this is a palindromic substring, B A B, and also A B A. Since they're the same length, you can return either one. We have C B B D. Obviously, the only palindromic substring here is BB because there's no other matches. So when you look at this problem, it's relatively straightforward. You know, you can kind of just visually inspect it, but doing it in code is a little bit more tricky. Now, the naive way would be just to check all the possible substrings, um, but this is really inefficient and it's going to end up with a really high um, runtime complexity and we can actually improve it a bit. And the way that we're going to do that is based on the, the simple principle that any character on its own is a palindrome, right? Um, and <clears throat> basically what we want to do is for every character in our string, we're going to go to the right and we're going to go to the left and we're going to check subsequent characters as they show up. And if there's a match of those characters, then we can continue on to the next character and basically try to check until at some point we have a you know a mismatch and once we have the mismatch we can say okay how long was the longest length so far uh, and we can store that length and basically use that as a potential solution and then we'll move through all the characters and basically try to expand around uh, a center and the center will be um, a character itself right now that's one way to do it and that is for odd length palindromes now you know something like this but we can actually have a palindrome where the two characters are the same so we have to consider two cases where there's a single character on its own and a character that's repeated twice and then it has some extra stuff so palindromes like this will always be even length because you'll have you know some other characters on the side and then you always have two in the middle. So this is the even length case. And when it's just a single character in the middle, this is the odd length case. So we actually need to check both um, to build our solution. But essentially the algorithm is the same. For every index in our string, we're gonna try to go to the right and to the left for as far as we can, keep a store of the greatest solution that we've seen so far. And then at the end, we'll simply just return um, the string that we've seen. So we'll store the indexes um, as far as possible as we were able to go uh, for any given inter iteration. And then we can simply just uh, cut the string at the end and get whatever our solution is. So that is the general intuition for our algorithm. Now let's actually go code this up. Luckily, it's not too bad. So I will see you in the code editor. Okay, let's code this up. Now, we have two parts here where we want to iterate over our string s and for each character we need to basically expand around the center. Now let's actually define the function which will do the expanding. So basically given a start index we're going to go to the left and the right and compare the values and see how far we can get before there's a mismatch between the left and the right pointer. So we're going to say def expand and this is going to take an i position in our string and a j position. The reason that we don't just have one is because remember we have the case where you can actually have um, two characters next to each other which are the same. So this is the even case. So we need to pass an i and a j. We can't just do uh, one of them. So in this case, um, our left pointer is going to be the i and our right pointer is going to be um, the j. So what we want to do here is we want to say while um, left is greater than zero, oops, greater than or equal to zero, and right is actually less than the length of the string, and the two characters um, pointed at by the left and the right actually equal each other. Uh, we want to keep moving our pointers, uh, the left to the left and the right to the right, obviously, uh, until we get a mismatch or we basically get to the end of the string. So we're going to move uh, left down and we're going to move right up. And once this function ends, we basically just want to see how far we were able to get because that will tell us kind of the, the length of the palindromic substring that we have um, and it's one potential solution. So that total length is going to be, um, so we want to return the right minus the left uh, minus one. Okay, so that is basically the, um, the length there, right? Now what we want to do is 
we want to um, go through and actually do uh, the process of checking all of the substrings. And we're going to want to store a temp solution. Um, and this is going to store the indexes uh, that we actually found the longest palindromic substring at. And you'll see how we work with these. Basically, we need to use these to check our best solution so far um, and make sure that we're getting the global maximum. So again, we're going to go over each of the indexes in S and we're going to try to expand around it uh, using it as the center. So we're going to say 4i in range uh, length of S. What we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, let's do the odd case where we take the current character as the current center. So we're going to say the odd uh, centered is going to equal to expand and we're expanding around the ith index so in this case i and j are the same here uh, which means that we just we, we start from the same point uh, in the even case j will actually be i plus one to account for the fact that you're going to have two characters that are the same or potentially the same next to each other so this is the odd centered now what we need to do is we need to check whether or not this solution is actually going to be better than what we've seen so far. So if the uh, odd centered, so remember this gives us the length of the substring. If this value is greater than um, answer, so our temporary of one, so this is going to be the right bound minus the uh, temp zero uh, plus one, because we need to account for the fact that um, we have the, the center. If this is the case, then we have a better solution here. So we can say that the the distance or the basically the length of the substring uh, is going to equal to the odd centered uh, divided by two, because remember, we need to take the distance equally from the center. So we need to go to the left and to the right. We can't just subtract the entire length of this um, substring we have to do it in half and then go on both sides and they'll add up to whatever our answer was so then our new answer will now become what i which is the um, current index minus the distance and then we have i plus the distance uh, sorry this is the length uh, length length okay so that is the odd length case but remember we can have an even length so we can have an odd sorry an even centered and this is going to be expanding around i and j now, or well, i uh, plus one, sorry. Uh, so that's the case where we have two characters that are the same, so like a bb together. So we want that to be at the center of our palindrome. And now we can say, again, we need to basically just check whether or not um, this will work. So, uh, sorry, if we have a better solution. So we want to say if the even length is greater than, again, uh, temp one minus temp zero plus one. So if our new solution here is actually better, shit, even centered, um, <clears throat> then the distance here is now that we have an even length, it's actually going to be the even centered uh, divide by two. And we need to do minus one to basically account for the fact that it's even and that we already have into, into consideration one of the characters in the center. Uh, otherwise, we'd be off uh, by one here. So that's why we need to subtract one. And uh, let's just keep the variable names consistent. Let's call it length. Um, let's see. And now the new best answer will be i um, minus the distance. And then it's i plus one plus the distance because remember, um, we're including i and i plus one in the center. So that's why it's i plus one here. Um, otherwise, once this for loop ends, all we need to do is simply just get our uh, string. So we need to slice the string to actually return it uh, because we're not returning the indices, we're actually returning the palindrome itself. So we're going to say that i j is going to equal to ands. So this is, oh, sorry, uh, our temp. Ah, uh, shit, this is temp as well. Sorry, when I did this originally, I had some different variable names, so I'm just keeping them consistent. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so now this is it. So all we have to do now is simply return s from i up until j plus 1. And that should be our solution. Hopefully I didn't mess up the variable names. Uh, yeah, of course I did. Ugh, sorry. I had different variable names before length. 
and length. Okay, do I have any distances in here? Okay, should be okay now. Uh, okay, cool, let's submit that. And cool, accepted. So, time and space complexity. For the time complexity here, uh, we are basically for each <coughs> point in our string, we are expanding around it. So in the worst case, um, this is going to be a big O of n squared time complexity because we'll, for each index, we could potentially have to go through the entire um, string. So for example, if the entire uh, string was just the same character, then it doesn't matter where you start. Well, the worst case would be in the very middle. Uh, you'd basically have to check the entire string um, with your function here. So that would be big O of n squared. For the space complexity, we only have some pointer variables and this array, it only stores two items. So our space is actually going to be uh, big O of one. So that is how you solve it using kind of this expanding around the centers approach. I do want to mention that there is an algorithm which actually runs in a big O of n time. I, it's some esoteric algorithm that I've never heard of before. It's like Menasher's or something. Um, probably most people won't know it. This is much easier to um, reason about. The downside is that while you do um, get big O of O, big O of N runtime, you also have big O of N uh, space complexity. So it's a trade off. This algorithm that we've implemented is a little bit slower, but it's constant space, whereas the other one is faster, but it's also linear space. So depending on the problem, if you actually know the other algorithm, Menasher's, I think it is, um, then you can weigh this with your interviewer and figure out which one to use. Um, I've gone with this one because it's much easier to follow and you know intuitively. Um, so that's why I opted for this one. Anyway, I hope you, you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something and I will see you in the next one. Bye.